Welcome back to Geology Info. Um, imagine waking up and discovering that the city where you live has a 70% chance of being hit by a devastating earthquake in the next 30 years. It's not science fiction. It's not an exaggeration. It's the reality of millions of Japanese people living under the constant threat of a megaquake that could arrive at any moment. And the most frightening part is that it's not a question of if it will happen, but when it will happen. Japan is an archipelago located in the Pacific Ocean, formed by more than 6,800 islands that extend for approximately 1,864 miles, 3,000 kilometers. This fascinating country, known for its advanced technology and ancient culture, is situated in one of the most geologically unstable regions on the planet. Japanese territory sits exactly where four gigantic tectonic plates meet. The Pacific Plate, the Philippine Plate, the Eurasian Plate, and the North American Plate. This meeting of colossal forces transforms Japan into a true natural laboratory of seismic activity. Japan's history is marked by devastating earthquakes that changed the course of the nation. In 1923, the Great Kanto earthquake struck the Tokyo region with a magnitude of 7.9, resulting in more than 140,000 losses of life and completely destroying entire areas of the capital. More recently, on March 11, 2011, the world watched in horror as the Great East Japan earthquake occurred, a tremor of magnitude 9.1 that triggered a tsunami with waves up to 131 feet, 40 meters high. The consequences were catastrophic. Approximately 18,400 losses of life in the Fukushima nuclear disaster, which forced the evacuation of more than 160,000 people. But why are Japanese scientists so concerned now? Why do experts from around the world claim that the worst may still be to come? The answer lies in an underwater region called Nankai Trough, a tectonic trench that extends for approximately 435 miles, 700 kilometers, along Japan's southern coast. According to data from the Japan Meteorological Agency and the government's Earthquake Research Committee, there is a probability between 70 and 80 percent that a megaquake of magnitude 8 or 9 will occur in this region in the next 30 years. What makes this threat even more frightening is the potential scale of the disaster. Scientific studies published by the Japanese government estimate that a magnitude 9 earthquake in the Nankai Trough region could generate a tsunami with waves exceeding 98 feet, 30 meters, in height in some coastal areas. The most recent simulations suggest that an event of this magnitude could result in hundreds of thousands of losses of life and cause economic damage exceeding $1 trillion. But how is Japan preparing to face this imminent threat? To understand why this earthquake would be so devastating, we need to dive into Japan's unique geology. The Nankai Trough is a subduction zone where the Philippine Plate dives beneath the Eurasian Plate at a rate of approximately 1.6 to 2.4 inches, 4 to 6 centimeters, per year. This constant movement generates immense pressure and tension in the rocks of the Earth's crust. When this tension accumulated over decades or centuries finally releases, the result is an earthquake of catastrophic proportions. The historical pattern is worrying and highly predictable. Geological and historical records show that major earthquakes occur in the Nankai Trough region at relatively regular intervals. The last major event was in 1946, when two earthquakes of magnitude 8.1 struck the region just two years apart. Before that, similar events occurred in 1854, 1815, 1707, and so on, usually with intervals of 100 to 150 years. Now, almost 80 years after the last major earthquake, scientists observe with apprehension that the statistical window for the next event is already open. But the threat is not limited to the earthquake itself. The true catastrophe would come from the combination of multiple simultaneous disasters. First, the violent shaking that would last two to three minutes, capable of bringing down even reinforced structures. Seconds later, a massive tsunami would form, with waves that could reach the coast in less than 10 minutes in some areas. The metropolitan regions of Osaka, Nagoya, and even parts of Tokyo would be at direct risk. Millions of people would experience the nightmare of evacuating in extremely limited time. The Japan Meteorological Agency developed a specific alert system for the Nankai Trough. When underwater sensors detect abnormal seismic activity or oceanic crust movements, the government can issue an extraordinary alert called Nankai Trough Earthquake Extra Information. This alert is not an accurate prediction, but a warning that the probability of a major earthquake has temporarily increased. 
In 2019, when a magnitude 6.4 earthquake struck the Hyuganata region near the Nankai Trough, authorities issued this type of alert for the first time, placing millions of people in a heightened state of preparedness. What keeps scientists awake at night is the possibility of a double earthquake scenario. Historical analyses show that major earthquakes in the Nankai Trough frequently occur in pairs, with a second event following the first within hours, days, or even a few years. Imagine the following situation. A magnitude 8 earthquake strikes the western part of the trough, causing massive destruction in Osaka and Kobe. Rescue teams work frantically when, 32 hours later, a second even stronger earthquake strikes the eastern part, devastating Nagoya and impacting Tokyo. This nightmare scenario is not fiction. It's exactly what happened in 1854 and again in 1946. The question that remains is, could modern Japan, with its densely populated megacities, withstand a tragedy on such a broad scale? Japan's response to this existential threat has been nothing less than extraordinary. The country has transformed earthquake preparation into a true science and art. Since the 1990s, Japan has invested billions of dollars annually in prevention technologies, early warning systems, and public education. But is this enough when nature decides to release centuries of accumulated energy? Japan's first line of defense is its revolutionary earthquake early warning system. Developed after the Kobe disaster in 1995, this system uses more than 1,700 seismographs spread throughout the country. When an earthquake is detected, the system instantly calculates the location, magnitude, and expected seismic waves. Information is transmitted to the population seconds before the destructive waves arrive. It may not seem like much, but these few seconds save lives. Bullet trains traveling at 186 miles per hour, 300 kilometers per hour, are automatically braked, surgeries are interrupted, elevators stop at the nearest floor, and alerts sound on all cell phones simultaneously. Japanese constructions are masterpieces of anti-seismic engineering. After the Kobe earthquake, which destroyed thousands of buildings, Japan implemented the most rigorous building codes in the world. Modern skyscrapers in Tokyo are built on giant shock absorbers that absorb seismic energy. Some buildings use pendulum systems weighing hundreds of tons that move in the opposite direction of the tremor, canceling out the movement. Others are erected on rubber and steel base isolators that allow the ground to move while the structure remains relatively stable. During the 2011 earthquake, the Sky Tree Building in Tokyo, at 2,080 feet, 634 meters tall, swayed but suffered no significant structural damage. But preparation goes far beyond technology. The culture of disaster preparedness is deeply rooted in Japanese society. Since childhood, children participate in regular earthquake drills at schools, learning to protect themselves under tables and evacuate in an orderly manner. September 1st is National Disaster Prevention Day, when the entire country conducts mass exercises. Families keep emergency kits at home with water, non-perishable food, flashlights, radios, and medical supplies sufficient for at least three days. Public buildings store emergency supplies and serve as designated shelters. The Japanese government is also investing in massive tsunami protection infrastructure. Along the coast, concrete walls 33 to 49 feet, 10 to 15 meters high were built after the 2011 tsunami. Automatic gate systems close ports and rivers when a tsunami alert is issued. Evacuation routes are clearly marked and concrete evacuation towers were built in areas where the natural terrain does not offer sufficient elevation. But here's the dilemma that haunts planners and scientists. These measures were designed based on the 2011 earthquake. What if the next event is even bigger, and you, are you prepared for natural disasters that could strike your region? Think about it, and if this video opened your eyes to the importance of preparation, subscribe to the channel, activate the bell, and share this knowledge. Because information saves lives.